care first and foremost about putting really good underground left field events on and not really worrying about you know the bottom line or the money or whatever and i think mike islington mill sets the gold standard in this country it's like a real thrill to see this stuff going on despite everyone's best attempts to kind of fucking throw a blanket over it or whatever putting on events here because i just think it's fucking superb and the rest of the country if not the rest of europe should be taking notes of what people are doing here Withington outbreaks of exuberance on the top deck of the 142. Moderate to fur. Chance of fried chicken, good. Augury of bones, future unclear. Holiday ghost of Frederick Engels, set to be annoyed of frivolity of man in baseball cap, quoting from popular ITV sitcom, giving rise to passenger action near Macklin's on the night bus. Minimal delay, isolated outbreak of terror. Stretford. Angry woman with nice nails on Samsung GS3 on top deck of the 253 will loudly demand to know if the man at the other end of the line thinks she's stupid. Spirit of Annie Kenny, force 10 to cyclonic, colossal presence in town always. Kersel, five side football interminable. Later, becoming moderate or good. Seen from the top deck of the 93. Single child's glove on fence. Doll cart in hedge. Dead pigeon under loose McDonald's wrappers. Chance of existential crisis. Nine, rising to ten. Dean's Gate. Secular beards, prognosis poor. Rain brings with it the suggestion of coal tar soap and a Gillette Max 3, for truly is the best that a man can get. Chance of people discussing the straight village, one and falling. Okay, uh, I'm Paul Hallow. Uh, I'm chiefly started off doing like illustration, fly gig posters and kind of doing like album art and stuff like that as well. And now I've started to kind of explore the idea of doing 3D builds and like building cardboard structures and I think I've been at the mill now for three years. I think the attraction of the mill has also possibly been something that's been building for years as well. The studios have had in the past. There's just been that kind of very like, you're kind of here just to work and you're here because literally it's a cheap space to operate. The mill, it feels like people kind of give a shit. We're all doing very different things, but it does feel like we're working on one umbrella company where we just get to like, do everything and do something different. In a modern era, we don't really hear of art scenes or anything like that anymore. It doesn't seem to be any trends these days. I think all trends, because we've, we've got the internet now, everything's just globally known. Everything, once a thing happens, it's known by everybody the next day. So I feel like the next progression now is this idea of like collectives and it's like, what kind of collectives are up to and what are they doing? So it might not be a trend in style but it'll be like a trend in like a collective thought about how to be how to do a practice since i've been here i've done work with callum on his baptist and bootleggers label the main collaborations i do these days are the ones with uh, textbook on the video jam work it's my highbrow outlet there's a time when i've got to stop drawing spaceships and robots and, and occult stuff something which is a little bit more intellectual a little bit more true proper <laughs> the crab the crab uh that was a uh bill for the volkov commander's parade it sounds 2014. That was this, this next step for me. 
I've been building 3D cardboard stuff and I've been testing ideas with calico on cardboard which was then painted with gloss paint. And I want people to be able to see the craft in the process of what I build so you can still look and go yeah I'm quite sure it's made out of cardboard but wow you know look, look what you can do with cardboard. Well as, as for the future of the mill I think it's again this is something which is different to the other mills and studios I've been in. Since I've been here it's always felt like the, the priority is an artistic creative space let's try and attract bigger artists and kind of like get people into the mill who work with the residents and inspire the residents to just do better. But I think the mill's going to be a chance now for touring artists and residents already to say, look, this is the process, this is the, this is the whole artistic life and this is what people do before the big shows happen. And I think that's what the mill will become. It's going to be exciting time. was one of the first places that I came to when I first moved to Manchester and I hadn't actually intended on staying in Manchester for that long but when I found the mill and started making friends in the city I've not really found a good reason to move away <laughs> and the mill is a really big part of that. I've had this particular studio for five years but this was also the first studio that I had when I very first moved to Manchester. My practice uh, has a focus on drawing, um, mostly that tends to be works on paper, um, kind of quite delicate, and quite intricate drawings um, with pencil and watercolour and ink. That's been the focus of my practice for quite a few years but um, I also have an interest in, in installation and recently performance. The past few years have kind of seen me starting to to expand my practice a bit so starting to work with installations, starting to work collaboratively. Working collaboratively is quite easy in a place like this because there's so many different art practices, creative disciplines and creative people here that it's kind of collaboration can kind of happen by osmosis because there's so many different people, different people working in different ways here, it's you find kind of quite quickly conversations will start to happen where you're just like oh yeah I might try fancy trying that as well or, oh I can add this to it or and so before you know it you can be suddenly in a band or that kind of, which is one of the things that happened to me um, after spending many years thinking that my time had probably passed for forming a band I suddenly found myself collaborating with um, five other amazing women um, to create the band Water It just seemed to happen naturally, and um, yeah, which is um, which has been really fantastic. And um, and like sort of some of the other collaborations, like um, I find myself working with M. Sam Weaver. We first started work working together on um, Sam Abita residency, and he invited me in to be the visual artist on the project, and that was really amazing because that's that again um, gave me. Um, this freedom and an arena to actually try out lots of new ideas that had kind of been running around my head for a long time but I'd never actually found a place for them so introducing live art, working with musicians um, 
which has like, led on to other collaborations as well, like working with dancers. fortunate to have seen the mill from its very very early days so I've seen it go through lots and lots of different phases see so many different people come in and out of the mill and all the different influences in, that they've had and and it's been really special like like physically it's seen the place completely transform so being what was effectively a shell full of like the residue of like all of the stuff that used to happen here so just and kind of seeing that transformed from that shell into what it is now, seeing all the studios, like, well, pretty much watching all the studios being built, seeing the, the event space turn into an event space, seeing the gallery develop, um, and kind of see all of these, yeah, all of these, like, new faces come through and all, like, different, different ideas. And, um, and it's been a really special journey over the years as well. Um, I mean, one of the things that is a particular favourite of mine is the idea of, like, the mill on tour. The idea of that pretty much started back in 2008. And the idea was that taking what we do out of the mill and placing it in another city and even another country. And um, it started off with Berlin Space, which was a group of us got together, um, so people from the mill and friends of the mill. Because um, when I think of the mill, I think of it as... A wider community beyond the actual like physical walls of the mill so it's like mill and mill friends so you were you were there as as a collective as well as an individual and it's an idea that we've carried on through the years so it's happened in new york it's happened in um in london it's happened in ibiza and this is where i kind of think of like the mill as being an extended community because every time the mill places itself somewhere else you're also extending that community and making new friends, making new contacts and, and carrying that on into the future. I think that's that's something that I would like to really see expand. And um and especially because as we as we sort of see more artists come through and do more residencies here, it's expanding that network and it's just expanding the horizons of what's actually possible. That's something that I would like to see carried on into the future and and just just grow and grow. I'm a painter and printmaker, and I run a small art gallery in Hoxton in London with my with my partner Rachel. We use it to kind of provide a platform for other young artists that we know. Yeah, it's been amazing, but it's been intense and tiring. That I really wanted to just get away for a bit and have some time to focus on my own work. 
So we kind of just came upon the idea of coming up to Manchester and doing a kind of swap. Ended up talking to John and Aaliyah, who've got studios here. So they wanted to kind of come down and have a taste of being in London and put on a show. It worked out really well. Yeah, so I lived in Manchester for a few years, and I used to come here a lot, played here a few times in a band, and also just coming to gigs here all the time. And I used to design all the posters for Emma and Vez for the Fat Out gigs and design their logo. It kind of ties into what I'm doing with the gallery in a sense. I really wanted to make my art practice DIY and like make my own equipment and so on. It's been great to be back. It's completely different living here to obviously coming here just as a venue. Being a part of the daily life here has been incredible. And you really see the actual sense of community and the kind of it's all those bits of in between time or just having breakfast with people or bumping into people, you know, that really makes this place what it is. I came here with some vague ideas of making work for a show that I'm doing later. Actually being here, I just wanted to respond to the place. Some, you know, I just wanted to celebrate it, really. Going around the place and doing observational drawing and painting is a really great way to just engage with it directly and document as much as I could as quickly as possible and make a show. I think what I like about places like The Mill is they set up a contained, kind of stable environment for people and have very few rules as to what they actually do with their spaces. It creates this blossoming of creativity and people constructing a life, basically, within this space um, that's really diverse and interesting and vibrant. So I guess I started by really spending time in, the, in Middlewood Locks, which is a piece of land next to the mill. Just an interesting little patch of kind of pointless scrubland that I used to really love. I felt like I was in a Tarkovsky film or something and there was some kind of weird experience of time dilation as I walked up this kind of abandoned road and I just really loved it so coming back here I realised that it was um, just about to be developed so I thought it's the perfect timing just to document the place really again to celebrate something which I think is really important you know there's no purpose to this piece of land so it's just really nice to go there and kind of and contemplate you leave it to rewild and actually the there's quite a kind of diverse plant life and insects buzzing around. When I was sat in the grass down there painting, it, I felt like I was in a wild place in many ways. And now, even the last few days, the atmosphere has just changed utterly. And the, the spot where I was painting in the grass has been turned over and covered in caterpillar tracks and mud everywhere. And groups of men, you know, kind of with drilling apparatus, digging into the earth. It's interesting to see that change. I guess there's a kind of nostalgia in recording. I mean, that's just inherent in whether you're taking photographs or painting or drawing, as soon as you record that moment, it's kind of already nostalgic, just through the act of doing it in a way. But yeah, I'd like, I'm definitely want to come back as well and kind of record how it goes in the future. It's nice to have a kind of place like that you can you can come back to away from your normal life and something that's familiar but you know, is new each time you come here.